you know, that terminology fool always gets me whenever I read it because you're not supposed to call somebody a fool and all that kind of stuff. But, but the, re re the reality is, is that when you're a fool, you're without God. So if I'm looking what they think I look like a fool, or if you think I, I'm looking like a fool, then, then, then I'm not sure where your definitions are lying. Because a lot of people say, I'll be a fool for Jesus then. No, I'm just loving Jesus. I'm not a fool for loving Jesus. Okay? So the only fools are those who don't follow him. That's foolish. That's foolish. So... I don't know what measure you're measuring behavior by, but if you'll look at King David with that ark, I'm just saying his wife got rid of him, or actually got rid of her, but she, 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 she mocked him, his love for God, because she was thinking he was being a fool. But he was really just praising God. Well, we see what happened to her. So I would rather just let God just use me you know, or, or however that looks like. You know, I loved it when Brian broke a move the other night. So it wasn't because, yay, Brian, but it's because he just said, hey, I love God. I'm going to do what, I, I'm just going to do how I, because everybody expresses their love and praise and worship differently. So I'm not expecting you to act like me, so don't think that. But when you have prune faces, or, I mean, your body language says, I'm closed off to God and to others. It doesn't take a lot of discernment for that, folks. I don't need to give you evidence about something you said or did. I can look at you and say, now, sometimes you're just in the valley of decision. That reads that way, too. Valley of decision looks differently than, I don't want to even move or hear that, or watch that, or anything. I don't want to be a part of that. There's a difference. So we're not asking you to be fools. Do you understand what I'm saying? God's not asking you to be a fool. He's just asking you to be real with him and with others, period. And if the Holy Spirit moves you, now granted, you understand there is balance. If you come in here screaming every time, I'm going to wonder. Because that just becomes habitual. See what I'm saying? We don't want, we don't want things to become habitual either. So, so maybe your worship today will be, I'm quiet and, and really pondering God, and I'll, I'm right here. That's great. Next week, you might be just going, yeah! Okay, that's good too. But nothing should become habitual except for that you do actually praise God. That should become habitual. That should become, not because it's a habit, because this is part of who you are. I'm pretty sure everybody drinks water. Everybody goes to the bathroom. Everybody does these things that are habitual that are good for you. Praise and worship is good for you. Worshiping God is good for you. Loving God is good for you. Reading his word is good for you. Loving each other is amazing for you. God never asks us to do anything that's not good for us. He never has. He never will. It may look squirrely to us, right? It may not be comfortable. But nonetheless, obedience is better than sacrifice. 